Hi, this is Style Scout with Brie Holloway. I'm your host, Brie. Follow me and be the first to discover the freshest and most sought after names in fashion, beauty, jewelry, and more. Let's Style Scout. We're here to meet one of the freshest and most original jewelry designers around. Each of her pieces are one of a kind, and each strives to bring together culture, texture, and individuality. Let's meet Sonia. Hi, I'm Sonia Boyajin, and I'm a jeweler. So, Sonia, how do you like to describe your jewelry? I would say that it's, it's whimsical, it's personal, it's intuitive, it's fun to wear, and I kind of think of it more like clothing than just jewelry, because it really makes a statement, I think, with whatever you have on. But just say it's like personal objects of adornments with a whimsical twist. What have people been most excited about when they first see your jewelry? And has that changed over the course of the years? I think the one thing that most people say to me when they first see the jewelry, wow, I've never seen anything like this before. And I think what really excites them is that the pieces are very comfortable to wear, actually. Nothing is too heavy, nothing is too light. Everything feels unique and everything has a storytelling quality to it. So people are really gravitated to that. And I think that that's what interests people the most and what they like when they first are introduced to my jewelry. Who loves your stuff the most? I have clients from a whole spectrum of uh, different professions and but the one kind of woman I think that really is drawn to my jewelry are uh, professional women. Women who work a lot, who have busy lives and are looking for something to wear with their wardrobe that's just going to add a little brightness to it or a conversation to it. And, and I, I think that they buy it because it actually socially engages them with other people as well. How do you approach each collection? I always look for a woman, and it happens serendipitously, you know, it could be I'm traveling somewhere and I hear about a story about this woman or that lived there or did things, and then I start kind of digging deep into their lives and wanting to know all the details, and, and that story ends up building a collection in itself. What was the first piece of jewelry you wore and the first piece you bought? I never thought I would be a jeweler, but it, you know, I've always, it's always been in my circle. When I was a kid, my grandmother's apartment was across the street from the Pasadena City College. Okay. Um, and there's where the flea market is once uh, at the first Sunday of the month. It's always there, it's still there. And I used to go with my grandmother. I, you know, I'd stay there during the summers and stuff. And my grandmother was into alterations. And she would go and she would buy the broken bits. And she would say, you'll see what we're gonna do when we come home. And we'd come home, back to her apartment, and she'd bust out her nail polish and start painting on the jewelry and taking it, fixing it all. Uh -huh. And then creating these great things with all the broken stuff you know, that she bought. And obviously that went with me really far because I was doing the same thing even when I was in my 20s. So my grandmother really taught me how to take something that's broken and reuse it and make it even better. Yeah, my grandmother was a huge part of my life and a person who is always recreating things with what exists. When you put together an outfit, because you're such a phen you have phenomenal taste obviously, do you start with a piece of jewelry or is it the dress or the shoe? The shoes. Ah. Always the shoes. I think the clothing is always secondary to me. So when I buy clothes, I'm always looking for uh, something that's going to be the canvas mm. where I could load my accessories on top of. Awesome. Yeah. Because I, I would have just assumed it was the jewelry. No, always the shoes. Oh. What type of fun are you having now with your business? Any time that I, I get to create, any time that I can be alone in my studio and make something and make something that's new that I've never tried and it worked is the most fun I could possibly have. I have, for the first time in my life, a space that's not the size of a closet. So I have the ability to spread out, make more things, make larger things, do other things other than jewelry, even if it is still using the same techniques. Be able to explore other, other areas of uh, 
I guess, decorative arts, <laughs> you know, for lack of better terminology. Well, and then that brings me to my next question, Yeah. which is we're here at your new space on La Brea. You used to have three different studios throughout the city. Yeah. How does it feel to have everything under one roof? I think when everything is under one roof and you see how things are developing and evolving in different sections, I think you just have bigger potential to create. It becomes more... Uh, united everything because I work with so many different materials that when they are together it, it becomes even more purposeful and one. Who's been the most powerful voice throughout your career that you've gone to for advice? Sonia Aram I would say would be the person that I think of most. She's the owner of the boutique in Beverly Hills called Mame. I knew her when I was really young. When I first started, she sort of called me up one day and had heard through the grapevine that I was making some crazy stuff. So wanted to see what I was working on. And I showed her and she just like from that moment on. In general, she's a champion for all artists and designers, but I would say Sonia specifically is the one person that kind of showed me the ropes. Thank you, Sonia Boyajian. Thank you for your so original, so inspiring, one-of-a-kind designs. And thank you for being part of Style Scout. Until next time, I'm your host, Bree, and this is Style Scout.